vibrate. <laughs> oh, it is. We love it. Welcome, everyone, to the regular meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. It is Monday, December 11, 2006. Will the clerk please call the roll? Chairman Backer. Present. Councillor McKinney. Present. Councillor Dill. Present. Councillor Lennon. Present. Councillor Lynch. Present. Councillor Rowe. Here. Councillor swift Kayata. Here. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, we will move on to the oaths of office to be administered by the town clerk. And so, do we do school board separate? Which would you like to do first? Okay. Could we have our newly elected uh, school board members, uh, Karen Burke, uh, Peter Cotter, and Kevin Sweeney, come up to be sworn in? Have you all raised your right hand for me, please? I solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution and will obey the laws of the United States and the state of Maine, that I will in all respects observe the provisions of the Council Manager Charter and ordinances of the town of Cape Elizabeth and ordinances of the town of Cape Elizabeth and statutes of the state of Maine and, of the state of Maine, and will faithfully discharge and will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of Cape Elizabeth School Board the duties of the office of Cape Elizabeth School Board thank you congratulations <laughs> And now if uh, Sarah Lennon and Jim Rowe would join me. Have you all raised your right hand, please? I solemnly swear. I solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution. That I will support the Constitution. And will obey the laws. Of the, of the United States and the State of Maine. That I will in all respects. Observe the provisions. Observe the provisions of the Council Manager Charter. Of the Council Manager Charter. And the ordinances of the Town of Cape Elizabeth. And the ordinances of the Town of Cape Elizabeth. And statutes of the State of Maine. And statutes of the State of Maine. And will faithfully discharge the duties. And will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Thank you, congratulations. Could I have a motion from someone to approve the minutes of meeting number 16-2006, held November 13, 2006? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Comments on the minutes, Councilor Lynch. 
I have um, one am am amendment to propose. We actually had a motion last month. Um, I'm looking to see what item it was under item 157 and it was a motion for a counselor to recuse herself and that motion was um, voted down 6-0 and so um, I think that that should appear as part of the minutes. That was item 157. Mm -hmm. I mean it was during item 157. That's right. That was Councillor Fritz, correct? That's correct. Any other comments on the minutes? Councilor Swift Kayata? I have um, something on item 155 on the second page at the bottom. Uh, this was the item that had to do with the traffic calming and road safety working group. I believe that after a discussion, the actual uh, motion that was approved was that the council allow the extension of the traffic calming road safety working group to extend their term and continue meeting until March of 2007 period. It didn't have this last part about being involved in a new, the planning of a new town center. Um, what we did, I went back and referred to my notes and what we did say, it wasn't part of the motion, but what we did say, just to refresh everyone's memory, is that the manager would draft something regarding a design subcommittee for the road safety committee to consider at their next meeting. So I think we need to just cut off the last portion of that to, to stop that motion at March of 2007 and just make it a period there. I agree. Thank you. My Other comments? The only other item that I had noted was on item number 158 um, with regard to the um, recommendation of the Fort Williams Advisory Commission uh, dealing with the proposed benches. I think we did alter that slightly to set a price tag of not less than, I forget what the dollar amount was, was it $8,000 so. for the two curved benches, but it was not less than rather than setting a firm price. Anyway, with those amendments, um, all those in favor of approval of the minutes? The motion is approved. Seven in favor, none opposed. Thank you. Uh, reports and correspondence. Councilor Dill? Well, I would just like to report that I had the honor and privilege of being sworn in to the 123rd legislature in Augusta this past week, and I look forward to serving the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. And I just wanted to thank everyone who came out, participated in the democratic process, and to thank all of those election workers that um, uh, helped as well. Thank you. Thank you, and we look forward to hearing more from you each month on what is going on up in Augusta. Thank you for being our eyes and ears up there. You're welcome. Town manager's report. No reply. It is now a time for citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. So if there is anyone here who would like to address the council on an item that is not on this evening's agenda, now would be an appropriate time to do so. Is there anyone here who would like to address the council? Seeing no one, we will move on to our first agenda item, number 1-2007, election of town council chairman for council year 2006. Could I have a motion? I would move, I would move the election of um, Councillor McKenney as um, Town Council Chairman for the Council Year 2000, actually 2007. Yes. Or 2000. Starting December 2006 and ending December 2007. Thank you. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second Councilor Swift Kayata. Discussion? All those in favor of the motion? The motion is approved. Seven in favor, 
none opposed. And I think with that, I will turn the chair over to our council chairman. Thank you. It is my distinct honor and privilege to step, step into the uh, shoes of uh, Chairman Backer. He's done a wonderful job. And I, I just have a brief story to tell about David before I, I give him this plaque. And that is, um, and, th and this really impresses me about David. I, I know David is a friend. I know him as a professional colleague. He's a, an estate and trust attorney, and I've worked with him on many, uh, in many situations. And I know him as a uh, community leader on the council. And um, many people may not realize this, but uh, David, prior to coming to Maine, had a successful law practice for 20 years in Indiana. And he was doing very well, had no real reason to uh, leave Indiana. But uh, he and his wife, Susan, and their two children, Grant and Davis, decided they wanted to live in a better part of the country. So David and his wife took it upon themselves to do some research. And with David's ability, as we all know, he's very capable. He could have gone anywhere and been successful. But they searched the country far and wide and decided to come here, to Cape Elizabeth, about 10 years ago or so. And uh, since then, David has become a very successful community leader, a successful attorney. He's now the chairman of uh, the estate and trust department at a, at a large law firm in Portland. And he's become a, a great uh, leader and um, supporter of the Beach to Beacon Road Race. I think he's the chairman of the, um, of the committee, the organizing committee. Is that, is that great? No, that would be David Weatherby. Okay. <laughs> wrong, well, wrong David. Wait, but, it's, close. but it's you, the race committee. Um, I'm a member of the okay, race committee. Okay, member of the race committee. But, in any case, David's done a lot of great things in Cape Elizabeth. His kids are great students in the school system, and he's become a real asset to this community. And I want to thank him for moving here, and I want to um, congratulate him on a great council year in 2006. Well, thank you, Paul. And I just want to say what a pleasure it has been um, to work with our town manager, uh, Michael McGovern, and the town staff, the heads of the various departments. The, in the three years that I've served on the council, with each year, I just have acquired more and more respect for what our town manager and all of the town staff um, is able to accomplish on behalf of all of the citizens of Cape Elizabeth. It's a wonderful group to work with. Michael, you have assembled a stellar group of people who perform at a very high level. Um, and we take it for granted, and we shouldn't. But they do it so well, we do take it for granted, and we expect nothing less than the excellence that they give us year after year. And we keep expecting more year after year, and they keep giving it to us. So I want to thank uh, the entire town staff for everything they do, and certainly the other members of the town council who have been very supportive over this last year. Um, and I certainly couldn't have served as chair without their support throughout. And it isn't always easy. And I know they didn't always agree with me on everything that, um, that we did, but it's a great group to work with. So thank you for the opportunity to have done it. Thank you, April. Okay.
Now we come to the uh, point in the meeting where we have citizens discussion of items not on the agenda. Do we have anybody here to, um, that would like to bring anything up? Yes. Okay. We'll move on to uh, item number 2-2007, adoption of town council rules. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Uh, discussion? Um, I have a question. I reread these town council rules and um, I noted that on the agenda, the back page of our agenda here, we have a, a draft of the meeting schedule, the council meeting schedule. And I wasn't sure if we need to approve, have a formal vote, because I noted in the town council rules that we need to vote on a new town, on whenever there are changes sort of from the regular meetings. And I also wondered if the rule needed to be changed because it says um, it may be changed by an order, uh, the date may be changed by an order or resolve passed at the previous meeting. So are we going to have to vote at each town council or can we change the rule to make it at a previous meeting? And then we could vote on the whole year right now. Mike, could you speak to that? As you've indicated, Ann, the rules provide that you do it at each and every regular meeting before the meeting that's changed. Okay. Thank you. A any further discussion? All in favor? The ayes have it. Okay. Next item is item number 3-2007, appointment of the Finance Committee. Do I have a motion? David. I move the um, appointment of Mary Ann Lynch as Finance Chairman for the upcoming year. Second. Okay. And it, it also includes the, um, the Council as a whole to serve as on the Finance Committee. I thought we were, I was making a nomination as Chair, but I will also nominate the entire Council to serve as the other members of the committee. And I'll second that. All, right, all in favor? Thank you. Next item, item number 4-2007, appointment of an ordinance committee. Do I have a motion? So moved. Sarah? Second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Next is item number 5-2007, appointment of an appointments committee. Do I have a motion? Yes, I move that we appoint Ann E. Swift Kayata as chair, David Backer and Marianne Lynch as members of the appointments committee. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Thanks. Item number 6-2007, appointment of representatives to e e Eco Maine Board of Directors. Do I have a motion? David. I move the appointment of councillors of Councillor Sarah Lennon and our town manager Michael McGovern to be our representatives to Eco Maine for the upcoming year. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Item number 7-2007, appointment of representative to Greater Portland Council of Governments Executive Committee. Do we have a motion? Ann. I move Paul McKinney as Second. representative. Second. Second. Ann. All in favor? Thank you. Okay, item number 8-2007, appointment of representative to and alternate to Greater Portland Council of Governments General Assembly. Motion, Ann? I move James Jim Rowe as uh, the representative and Cynthia Dill as the alternate. Second. Second. Okay, Mary Ann, all in favor? Okay. Um, next, item number 9-2007, appointment of representative to PACS Policy Committee. 
Jim? I move that we appoint uh, Manager McGovern to serve as our representative to the PACS Policy Committee. Do you have a second? Second. Mary Ann? All in favor? Okay. I don't know if all the meetings are going to be like this, but this isn't bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Item number 10 2007. Appointment of representative to MMA Legislative Policy Committee. Do I have a motion? I move Cynthia Dill as our representative. Second. Second. Sarah? All in favor? Okay. Next is item number 11 2007, appointment of representative to Thomas Memorial Library Foundation. Do we have a motion? I move Mary Ann Lynch. Ann? Second? Second. Cynthia? All in favor? <coughs> okay. Number, item number 12 2007, public hearing on proposed amendments to traffic regulations. Do we have a motion? Public hearing first. Uh, excuse me. Thank you, Mike. All right. Uh, public hearing on proposed traffic amendments to regulations. That means we move to the public. Um, is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to this issue? Okay. Okay. The, I, I uh, hereby close the public hearing. And do we have a motion on this amendment? I have a motion, but um, it's a little bit difficult. Our package contained um, half of the traffic regulations proposed. Um, we were missing the even-numbered pages. So I normally would move adoption of the um, amendments as set forth in our package. And I'm a little bit at a loss to make that motion since it's not in our package. I don't know if anyone else has the whole package. Well, I, I also had missing pages, but I found at my seat a complete set. Oh, so you might okay. want to look under your okay. paperwork. Well, then I would move. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, or how about to post it for public hearing? Hmm? Well, I would just move the amendment to the traffic ordinance as more fully set out in the package, okay. um, and I would just say, um, in particular, um, the new language um, is indicated with a line underneath, and the strikeouts are indicated with a strikeout. So I would move that, and I would just note for the record that the ordinance committee did have a brief meeting um, on these amendments. I think back in August. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been tabled a few times, so um, but they're fairly minor. Amendments. Okay. Do we have a second on the motion? Second. Second. Okay. Ann? And do we have discussion on the on the item? Yes. I would just note that um, I too had noticed that the the package was missing the alternate pages, but I would note that the public had and has available the complete um, traffic regulations, including the, the ch proposed changes, um, online. They, they, the uh, notice that went out online uh, on the website mm -hmm. had a link to the complete package, so it has been available to the public. So I just wanted everybody to know that. Okay, Michael. I just know we had copied this. This was the third straight council meeting we had copied, and we we tried to save money at the, the last meeting by doing double sided, but <laughs> it, it never it never pays. It, uh, <laughs> the next time it gets copied, and half the pages are missing. So we'll think twice before we do double sided again. Uh, Jim. I had a question on section 13-2-2, uh, prohibited locations. Are there permitted exceptions to that piece of uh, legislation? In other words, uh, I happen to, to run a company that has large delivery vehicles that park, sometimes block uh, lanes of traffic. Uh, with, we use cones and so forth. And some towns require us to get permits from either the police department or the public works department, highway department to perform those duties. And I wondered if Cape Elizabeth had such a, a setup within town. Mike? I, there are no specific uh, exceptions within the ordinance unless it's specifically stated. You know, I, I will say that, you know, it's the police officers who give out these tickets and 
they're not unreasonable gentlemen, and, and the number of tickets we give out are not <coughs> tremendous. Uh, the, the tickets are more to be, you know, a disincentive mm -hmm. to, to behavior that, that really isn't acceptable when you look at the parking at those. But if, but if there's a delivery truck dropping something off, you know, it's, it's just not an issue. And there are, you know, once in a while someone will call and say they're having a special event at their home, they notify the police and the police don't ticket. But, uh, oh. you know, it's important that the rules be in place if, if there's, you know, blatant public safety hazards that they... Yeah, I just wondered if there was a procedure. Uh, for example, uh, a few weeks ago there was a person moving either in or out of a house on Oakhurst Road, and it was a section of Oakhurst Road, or it was a winding, hilly turn, and a moving van had taken up better than half the road. It was, it, it was not a safe situation, and there's, I just wondered what, this, what the uh, procedure was for allowing something like that. That's all. Marianne? I would just note for the record, too, um, we're not making any change. We, there are no proposed changes to that section tonight. Um, that's one of the uh, many sections that remains unchanged. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay. The next item, item number 13-2007. Recommendations from the Appointments Committee, appointments to boards and commissions. And I believe Marianne passed a, an updated version of this out. <coughs> Do we have a, um, a motion? I'd like to make a motion, and then if I might speak to my motion for a minute. Um, I would move um, appointment of the following individuals, and I'll read their names. Um, Christopher Lynch to the Board of Assessment Review. Ron Palmquist to the Arts Commission, Carol Haas, Dina DeSena to the Conservation Commission, Daniel Chase, Greg Altsnauer, and Jennifer Duddy to the Fort Williams Advisory Commission, Julie Armstrong to the Personnel Appeals Board, Beth Richardson, Jack Keneally, and Scott Collins to the Planning Board, Louise Sullivan, Geraldine Davis, and Sarah Spidell to the Recycling Committee, um, Frank Levitt to the Riverside Memorial Cemetery Trustees, <coughs> Pat Breedenberg to the Thomas Memorial Library Trustees, Peter Howe and David Johnson to the Zoning Board of Appeals. And um, I just want to say the Appointments Committee met and so um, and interviewed all of these individuals with the exception of those who were up for reappointment where they had been interviewed once and um, we were familiar with um, the job they had done. So we did not um, and generally do not as a rule re um, interview reappointments, but we interviewed all of the new people. Um, the fellow members of the Appointments Committee were Ann Swift Kayata and Michael Malls, and I want to thank both of them for um, their um, participation. And I also want to thank Deborah Lane, um, <coughs> without whom we could not do this job. Lastly, I want to thank all of the um, people who applied for boards and commissions. We're very fortunate in this town. Um, we had um, many people apply to um, some of the boards. Unfortunately, we had some boards where we didn't have enough applicants, but by and large, um, we are very fortunate that we have a number of um, very competent, qualified citizens who are willing to give their time and talents. And we appreciate not just those who applied and are being appointed, but also all of those who applied. And you were all great, and we would encourage you, if you are not appointed this time, to apply again. Um, Lastly, I just wanted to um, take this opportunity to mention that we did not have enough applicants for the Arts Commission, the um, Conservation Commission, the Personnel Appeals Board, and the Thomas Memorial <clears throat> Library. Those um, positions will all be re-advertised in the Cape Courier um, with a deadline of January 5th. Um, we are hoping that more citizens will apply to serve on those boards, um, and um, we would anticipate having um, interviews early in January. So um, with that, I would move the adoption or appointment of these people. And again, I just want to thank um, everyone involved. It's a 
big process every year to fill all of these boards and commissions. So thank you. Thanks, Marianne. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have further discussion? Uh, oh, go ahead. I would just like to also thank Marianne Lynch. She did a really good job of chairing these meetings, and it, uh, it can be confusing keeping everybody straight when we have three hours back to back of 10 or 15 minute interviews and she just did a good job of keeping us organized as did Deborah Lane but I just wanted to uh, thank Mary Ann. Excellent. David? Uh, before we vote on this, the sheet that was in my packet. Yes, that, um, no, that sheet, we had some changes over the weekend and so we substituted a new sheet. We've had okay. um, a couple of people who's um, one who's, who asked to have his nomination okay. withdrawn. So I read from the new sheet, which is in front of you somewhere. <laughs> Here, I'll give you mine, well, David. That's a fine. Thank you. Any further discussion, Jim? Uh, would I be correct in, in assuming that there are two vacancies on the Community Services Committee? My wife uh, The Community Services Commission, uh, the two vacancies are school board appointments. We actually had um, some great candidates that applied to us, and we forwarded their applications over to the school board, but they are not town council appointments this time. I think we have a few appointments, but neither of these two seats are. Thank you. <clears throat> is it against the rules for one person to serve on two boards? It is against our rules for one person to serve on two boards. Okay, uh, without further discussion, I'd like to make a comment to echo Marianne's thoughts. And um, I would say that after seeing the resumes of the people that apply to these boards and commissions, what happens is it's really a toss up because you have so many very highly qualified people, it really, in many cases, doesn't matter who you pick because you're gonna get the cream of the crop. So what that means is that people who have applied and were not selected should reapply and should think that, you know, they weren't rejected by any means. It's just that we have so many qualified people that, um, you know, the town wins in any case. And we appreciate all the service that people do because, as the old saying goes, many hands make light work. And, and that's what makes Cape such a wonderful community. So with that, all in favor? Okay. Next item is item number 14, 2007, appointment of registrar of voters for a term to expire on January 1, 2009. Do I, do we have a motion? Oh, Michael, would yeah. you like to Mr. say something? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to recommend the appointment of April D. Cohen Tracy uh, as the Registrar of Voters for a two-year term from January uh, 1, 2007 to January 1, 2009. We have so a motion? Moved. Cynthia? I would like to move that we appoint or reappoint April D. Cohen Tracy as the Cape Elizabeth Registrar of Voters for that term. Do we have a second? Second. Jim? All in fa uh, any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Okay, now we will move to item number 15, 2007, acceptance of 2006 gifts and donations. Michael, do you have any comments? I'd like to thank Deborah Lane for uh, assembling the, the list. Uh, the gifts range from uh, playground donations, uh, gifts to the fire department, uh, the wet team, the police department for park benches for the Thomas Jordan Trust, miscellaneous Fort Williams donations, including a, a generous one recently for some tree planting, Thanksgiving baskets, some garden club donations, uh, Museum of Portland headlight donations, some considerable amount of library donations, uh, and the list goes on. And, you know, just today, not on the list, but you know, it'll be accepted formally in a while. Uh, Deborah informed me we received a donation of over $7,000 for the Sprowing Church uh, from the Sprague Foundation. So, uh, very generous and uh, appreciate all the gifts of the citizens throughout the year. Do we have a motion? David. I move the acceptance of the gifts and donations uh, received by the town. Uh, during calendar year 2006. 
Second. Yeah. Any, any discussion? Okay. Well, I, yes. I would just Go like ahead, to sir. comment. I was really moved by the description um, and amounts of the gifts, and I think it's fantastic and very grateful to all those donors. I'd just like to add one more thing. This had, I should have spoken a little bit more in the spray contribution. Deborah had had a had had an inquiry from one of the family members, and the way it works with the Sprague uh, Foundation, a family member sponsors grant applications, and one of the members called her, and she filled out quite a bit of material and forwarded to the family member. So I, I really want to thank Deborah for her efforts on it, as well as uh, the family member who was the sp specific sponsor of the uh, of the donation. Thank you, Michael. And uh, with that, all in favor? Okay. Great. Okay. Item number 16-2007, proposed naming rights agreement for athletic fields. And I, I understand there might be somebody in the audience that may want to speak to this issue, so I will open it up to uh, public discussion if you have a, a comment you'd like to make. Um, do we have a motion on, uh, you know, I'm going to cl close public discussion in that case. Yes, I will. I have some remarks that I would like to uh, share with you. This is upon the pro uh, proposal to designate the new Cape Elizabeth turf field as Hannaford Field, December 11, 2006. One of the leading families of Cape Elizabeth since the 19th century has borne the surname of Hannaford. There were a number of Hannafords in Cape Elizabeth, and they owned farms including a land on what is now the Proputic Club, near what is now Hannaford Co Cove Road, and on the parcel containing Cape Elizabeth High School and most of the school complex. One of the members of the Hannaford family, Arthur Hannaford, in 1883 began selling high-end Cape Elizabeth produce in Portland. Arthur was later joined by two brothers, and in 1902 they formed Hannaford Brothers. Today, the Hannaford name is known throughout much of the northeast part of the United States, with over 150 supermarkets and combination food and drug stores serving the public. For about 200 years, the name Hannaford has been known in Cape Elizabeth as folks who plant seeds and contribute to the economic vitality of the community. This evening, we have before us a, proposal, a proposed agreement which would restore the Hannaford name to one of the original Hannaford farms. It is proposed to name the new turf field behind Cape Elizabeth High School as Hannaford Field. This designation commemorates both the historic use of the high school land as well as the support of the Hannaford firm and its associates who have provided significant funding for the new turf field. Hannaford itself has given substantially towards the new field and its procurement of a scoreboard from Coca-Cola bottling and donations from its associates have also greatly are also greatly appreciated. Hannaford has been a leader in ensuring that the new field will become a reality in 2007. They have planted seeds, but their contribution, the contributions of others should, not, should be noted as well. Through the efforts of Kids Turf volunteers, over 600 donors have helped with the turf field project with cash donations and in-kind contributions. The project got its start with an effort led by Graham Smith and others to have the field lit at night. The late Ray Moulton stepped forward and provided major support for the new lights. Ray was also a significant supporter of the Cape Elizabeth Educational Foundation. A graduate of Cape Elizabeth High School, Ray's support of scholarships, the lights, and other endeavors in Cape Elizabeth truly assists Cape Elizabeth students in many ways, and his legacy will be formally recognized at a later date. While the turf field is not yet in place, the first night game in Cape Elizabeth was held at the turf field uh, Turfield site last month. It was fitting for the first game that the first game included over 50 alumni of Cape Elizabeth High School. The game was organized by John Brady, who has been a leader in the kids' turf effort and who has done so much in memory of his late son, Kevin Brady, who was a star soccer player at Cape Elizabeth High School. Kevin Brady Fund has been a strong supporter of the kids' turf project as well as for scholarships for graduating seniors. Another donation of note was from Imad Khalidi. Mr. Khalidi is the chairman of Auto Europe, a major international firm headquartered in Portland, Maine. He wrote to Michael Ott, the chair of the Kids' Turf Committee, quote, this country gave me the American dream, and I feel I must give back, end quote. It is this spirit of Imad Khalidi 
of Hannaford, of Ray Moulton, of Graham Smith, of John Brady and the Kevin Brady Fund, and of Michael Ott, who have collectively encouraged over 600 others to give to benefit Cape Elizabeth's youth now and into the future. Without the vision and determination of Michael Ott and the Citizen Committee, there would be no new turf field to name as Hannaford Field. So I wish to thank all of those who have contributed to this effort with funding and with leadership in raising the required dollars. And I especially wish to thank Hannaford for recognizing his, its historical roots with its significant contribution. I would like to entertain a motion that we approve I would like to entertain a motion that we approve the proposed naming rights agreement designating the new field as Hannaford Field. I have a motion. Chair. Mr. Chairman, uh, I would move that we approve the proposed naming rights agreement designating the new turf field uh, Hannaford Field. So, Second. Thank you, David. Any discussion on the motion? Yes, Cynthia. I have a question. Um, there was some correspondence from a citizen who had some concerns about um, the naming of the field, and I'm wondering if um, it may be um, prudent and wise and just make sense to have some public input before we agree to name the field. I don't think, I don't think we have any opposition to that. That's what I was trying to do in the, before we uh, went to the motion, but uh, if anybody there was would... No, except there was no notice sure, to sure. the public. Sure, sure. Well, if anyone would like to speak to this issue, um, you're more than welcome to step forward at this time. Yeah. Thanks, Cynthia. Yeah, I just, just to clarify, I think what I'm saying is that I, it's my belief that there may be a need to have a, a public hearing formally noticed as such, not just it included as an agenda item and opened up to discussion. There's a difference in my mind, but uh, thank you. I, you know, uh, Councillor Dell is correct. You know, whenever you name something, there's always concerns expressed. There's been a, a number of, of meetings between individuals involved, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think, as, as the Chairman's comments indicate, you know, we, we want to make sure that there's proper recognition and in, in good recognition in, in, in different ways and that we recognize the contributions of everyone. And there's still ongoing opportunities for that, ongoing discussions uh, with involvement of the school board and, and others. And, uh, you know, I, I, I think it's important that that continue. The, the, the folks that did have other interests, they, they were, all, were aware of the meeting and, uh, you know, tonight. And, you know, there's, there's been no, you know, there's been good communication, I would say, you know, particularly in the last few weeks of, amongst the, the various parties involved. Uh, David? And I'd also note for Councillor Dill that the author of the email to which you refer is here tonight. Thank you. That helps a lot. Thank you, Cynthia. I mean, Marianne? Yeah, um, just um, for the record, I guess, um, it's the recommendation of the Kids Turf organization that the field be named the Hannaford Field. And is it also the recommendation of the school board that this field be named the Hannaford Field, since it's a school field? Michael, do you want to speak to I, I, would, I would let the school department speak for itself. They've been aware of it, but there hasn't been a formal vote. I, I just want to make sure that there isn't any objection. I, uh, Alan, would you like voting. to speak to that as a superintendent? Thanks. Good evening. Uh, we have had some discussion about this. There has not been a formal vote of the board, but the information about the possible naming of it has been, we've been aware of it for a while. And so the support for the naming of the field based on the history that uh, Paul has just given is there, but there has not been a true vote of the school board itself. Thank you, Ellen. <clears throat> I guess I should go back to my comments briefly and just say that um, we're not trying to exclude anybody by any, by any means. What we're trying to do is recognize um, everybody who's been involved in this, and there will be opportunities for other naming rights, if you will. Um, 
The reason we're recognizing the Hannaford family in particular is because they have been the lead donor in this campaign, and they, they really have done a lot. Had it not been for them stepping forward, I don't think we would have a turf field to be uh, discussing this evening. So, I have a question. Is the, um, is the complete <coughs> donation of the Hannaford Brothers Company $100,000? No. It's um, the, actually, they asked us not to. I mean, the amount set forth in the proposed yeah. agreement is $100,000. So. Well, well, it's more than that. Uh, it's, and it includes the, the, um, the signage that they, they got for, for the field, as well as other donations from their associates. I would make a motion that we table this issue pending a vote by the school board and additional time for some of the council members who aren't as up to date with some of these um, facts to maybe, um, I, I'm personally just, I'm not necessarily opposed to the idea. It's, I'm just not, um, I'm not prepared to um, vote on it tonight. Okay, Mike. Yeah. Councillor Dale, I, I would suggest that that it be approved, but that I, I not be authorized to sign it until the school board also agrees to it. You know, just a slight difference of, of what you've suggested. I, I agree that it's important with any naming rights agreement on school grounds that the school board approve it as well as the town council. We get into this, you know, chicken and egg issue of who goes first. Uh, and, you know, and ultimately it, it is the council's decision. But, you know, it, it still, it is on school grounds and the school board should have say as well. Are you saying it would be a conditional approval? It would be so a conditional approval uh, conditioned upon the school board also approving and that I would not sign the naming and rights agreement until the school board approval was also received. Jim, do you accept that as a friendly? Well, we well, can't. The, we well, had a motion right, to table. Motion to well, table. okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second no, on the no, motion to table? Seconded. Nobody seconded it. Do we have a second on the motion to table this item? Okay, there is no second, so it, it, that motion dies. Now, back to the original motion. Um, would you like to amend your motion, Jim? Uh, yes, I would uh, reword the, the motion to read that I move that we approve the proposed naming rights agreement designating the new field as Hannaford Field, uh, pending school board approval of the same. Who was and as the David. person who seconded the motion, I accept the amendment yeah. and second the there, uh, amendment as made. Okay. Is there any uh, further discussion on this current motion that's on the table? If a town member feels very strongly about it, can that person contact the school board and go through that venue to express themselves, just in case some people feel they haven't weighed in? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there's always that prerogative. That always exists. Okay, do we have uh, any further? Are we good? I, I just have a question. Um, the, the rewording of the motion was approve, uh, approve the naming agreement pending the approval by the school board. And I just want to make sure, is that the same as a conditional approval? Okay, so the, the approval that we are voting on tonight is the ultimate approval is conditioned upon the school board voting in favor of the naming agreement. I'm not going to sign the document if this motion passes until I hear from the superintendent of schools that the school board has also approved the, the naming of the field. Thank you. With, with a vote. With, with a school board vote. With a school board vote. Right. Yes. Okay. okay. All in favor of the motion as amended. Okay. 7 0. Thank you. Okay. Now we will move on to. Item number 17, annual special amusement permit for Raputa Club. Do we have a motion? Jim. I would move that we approve the uh, Raputa Club's uh, request. And I am somewhat relieved that this request didn't per pertain to the Raputa Club wanting to uh, televise my golf game. Because <laughs> that would be special amusement for many people. <laughs> special amusement. Mm -hmm. uh, do we have a second on the motion? Second. Okay, Sarah. And any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Good. Okay, now we will move on to 
And it looks like we're skipping item number 18. Is that correct? It's been yeah, they, they had indicated the material would come in and it did not. Okay, very good. Okay, we move to number item 19 2007. Request for a zoning ordinance amendment from Canyon Creek Development Incorporated, the former Viking Nurse Nursing Home property at 126 Scott Dyer Road. Do we have a motion? Yeah, yeah. Oh, Michael, would you like to? Speak? Yeah, I would like to point out that Owens McCulloch is in the audience. Owens uh, is associated, he's a consulting engineer, he's an engineer, and he's the consulting engineer. Uh, on this project, uh, he's with the firm of uh, Sebago Technics, and uh, this involves the, the old Viking nursing home property, and if you'd like a brief presentation from Owens, he's here to, uh, to do that if you'd like. Okay. Come on up, Owens. We'd love to hear from you. Before he makes this presentation, is this something that is properly referred to the Ordinance Committee? Planning Board. Planning Board. Planning Board. Zoning amendments have to go to the Planning Board. And then it goes to the Ordinance. Then, then, then back the Ordinance. to the Council and then to the okay. Ordinance Committee. I, I did bring an aerial photo, if, if people were interested, just of the Viking nursing home and area. But if, if everybody already knows where it is, I won't bother to bring it up. <laughs> I think we're pretty good on it. Yeah, I assume thank so. you. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, thank you for hearing me tonight. Uh, my name is Owens McCullough, a civil engineer with Sebago Technics, uh, here tonight representing Cannon Creek Development. Uh, there are folks that uh, do development of assisted living and independent uh, living facilities and they, they're out of Salem, Oregon and they actually do them in a number of states across the U.S. Uh, they have um, been uh, interested in the Viking nursing home which currently is vacated and what they would like to do is redevelop um, the Viking nursing home. C could you please speak up Owens? Sure. Thank what you. they would like to do is redevelop uh, the Viking nursing home. They'd actually like to tear down one of the buildings. There's, there's two buildings on the property. One was about a 1979 vintage. The other was a 1990 vintage building. The 1979 one is kind of dated. Uh, they'd like to tear that down, put up a two-story building, and actually the footprint gets smaller uh, than what's out there right now. Uh, but in looking at it, uh, what they'd like to do is have a total of 95 units. It's 40 um, uh, 40 independent care units and 55 assisted living units for a total of 95. The current facility, the old facility had uh, room for about 120 beds, but as we looked at the current ordinance in the RC zone, the density would tell us that uh, we need to seek a zoning change to allow for the 95 units. Apparently, I think the zone has changed somewhere along the line, and so we do need to seek uh, planning board and council approval to increase that density to do this project. Uh, and looking at the project, it seems to be consistent with what the goals are of the town and the comprehensive plan. We've had a number of discussions with Maureen O'Mara, the town planner, who has helped give us some guidance in this. And uh, so we think it's a good use uh, for the site. It's very similar to what the site was. Uh, it's got public water and sewer on the site, so that's very nice. And uh, we think that uh, by redeveloping it, it'll take that use, that vacated building, and hopefully bring a nice project into the town. But we can't do it without a zone change for the density. Okay. Any questions for Owens? All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Appreciate thank it. you. Okay. Given that, uh, do we have a motion on this item? Would somebody like to make a motion on this item? I'm not exactly sure what the motion would be. Uh, request for a zoning ordinance amendment. Uh, it's basically to refer it to the planning board. Refer it to the planning board so they can review it and then it would come back to us. So the motion would be to refer this item to the planning board for a zoning ordinance amendment, et cetera. Yes, Marianne. Um, just a question um, before Cynthia does the motion, just to make sure everything is included. Is there a time um, issue here, and can we ask the planning board to return it within a specified time? I don't know, Michael. You know, the, the requirement of the planning board is, you know, they would probably have a workshop on this. 
they would then have it at a meeting. They'd need to schedule a formal public hearing. They'd have a formal public meeting. It's reasonable. It's reasonably to be expected that they would report back probably around April 1 at the earliest. Uh, it's more likely they'll probably report back around uh, May 1. You know, there's certainly to be interest in the community on this issue. Uh, when the original Viking was built in 1979, there was there was quite a bit of concern, particularly from the Brentwood neighborhood, from the, the nearby neighbors, and we would anticipate uh, with with this proposal, you know, similar questions and, and similar issues. Uh, you know, the, the good thing about this proposal, and you know, what makes it very intriguing, is that it does provide for for apartments for the aging population, of which uh, all of us uh, qualify. Uh, or, or will will soon. Or soon. And, uh, <laughs> it, it's really need in Cape Elizabeth, and I think think it's interesting that uh, you know a property that I remember being built is now being torn down because it's too old. Uh, but uh, it uh, it would provide a good use in the community. But you know I think it really requires a, a good community dialogue to see if if this is the proper density that the Canyon Creek Development Inc is is proposing. <coughs> it's one thing to like the proposal, but it's another thing to assess. The density in the planning board, I think, is capable of doing that. Okay, Cynthia. Well, I have then a uh, question. I am fully, I very much support the concept as it's described in the proposal and um, elaborated on in the presentation. It's difficult for me to um, request a zoning ordinance amendment without, you know, the specific language of the amendment. That's just what I'm used to. So, by making a motion to refer it to the planning board, we're not necessarily sending with the motion. There's no approval. All we're doing is uh, uh, so, referring it to them so that they can do their work. Okay, because well, it's that's not really our our expertise to. Well, the the language in the agenda says a request for a zoning ordinance amendment suggests that we're asking for an amendment, and I that's guess true. what I'm willing to do is move to have the issue um, referred to the planning board and see what they recommend back. What is that not procedurally correct? Yeah, the, 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 if I might, Mr. Chairman, the, the zoning ordinance is, 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 is fairly specific. That in order for there to be a zoning ordinance amendment, the council has to refer a zoning ordinance amendment to the planning board. It does not require that the language be actually prepared. Uh, the hope is, in this instance, that the, the planning board would prepare some language that, that would look at, that would consider this issue. And you know, that's one reason we debated pr preparing the language in advance but decided it was, it was better to maintain the flexibility of the planning board in, in drafting language that, that might have not only the density, but also you know, certain performance standards, uh, aesthetic standards that, that would ensure that the density uh, be compatible in any neighborhood in the RC zone where, where one of these types of facilities may go, because whatever ordinance language to come up with would not only apply to this proposal, it would apply to any proposal uh, that meets the language that the planning board would eventually come up with. Do you have a suggestion then on the language we send to the simply to, re board? to refer the request for a zoning ordinance amendment to the planning board? That's all. Okay. okay. Well, I would second that. Who was who the? Uh... Mm -hmm. This was that a motion by yeah, who made the <laughs> well, Now that I'm clear on what we're doing, um, I move that we refer the request for a zoning ordinance amendment to the planning board. Second, we have a second that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Now, we, we, we've had a lot of discussion. Do, do we have more? Uh, and I would just say, um, both uh, Councillor Ian Swift, Kayata, and I have been serving on the Comprehensive Planning Committee. And um, this is an identified need as we've looked forward for the next 10 or 15 years in the town um, would be um, elderly housing and rental housing mm -hmm. um, so that people can downsize um, appropriately. So um, we, we haven't gone so far as to come up with the particulars of densities, but this certainly is addressing a need that's been identified after almost 18 months of work. So it's kind of exciting. Thank you for that input. That's very valuable. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor of the motion? Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Owens. Okay. Um, number item, item number 20-2007, update of wastewater agreement 
with po Portland Water District to include Tall Pine Pump Station. Do we have a motion? If, if I might briefly uh, Mike, explain. Michael, go ahead. Thank the, you. Um, the Water District maintains our different pump stations around town, and uh, we pay them for it once a year through an annual assessment. This particular pump station at Tall Pine, you might not be familiar with. Tall Pine is a uh, is the area that's at the, the end of uh, Brentwood, closest to Lyons Field. The, the actual Tall Pine pump station is that beautiful new facility that we see right along Route 77, just as you go by Lyons Field. This, this agreement provides that the Water District main, will maintain it. The council in approving this is not blessing that, that new structure that you see there. In fact, uh, we're not very happy with its aesthetic condition and we're looking at actually physically moving that control box inland away from the road next spring as we had a meeting on it last Friday and I, I, I appreciate the uh, some of the comments that have received on it I think they're all on target uh, it, it's uh, not very attractive as it now stands and uh, we regret that and uh, we are looking at moving it but in the meantime we want it to be operational and uh, running uh, for the winter months because before it was done we, we had to go there every uh, week or so and, and pump manually uh, the sewerage down that trench in this pump station. Uh, it was supposed to be done today, uh, if, I'm not sure if it was, but we'll be taking care of that. But if, if you get complaints about how ugly the thing looks, uh, you, you can agree or disagree as you so choose, but I agree with those comments and uh, we're looking at moving it. So. Okay, excellent. Okay, now do we have a motion? Ann. I move that we approve the updated agreement, wastewater agreement with Portland Water District. Okay, uh, do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Jim. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. And now we move on to item number 21-2007. Update a policy of recognition of bereavement. Michael? Yeah, when uh, certain people pass away, including a, a serving member of a board or commission, a former employee, a former council member of the spouse, parent, child, or significant other of an employee, uh, the town always sends flowers uh, from the town, from the town council, uh, or contribution to the listed charity or to another charity if we know that. Uh, uh, the person was particularly close to a charity if there wasn't a charity list. This policy merely changes the amount up to $50 to up to $100. The amount up to $50 was set in October 1991. The cost of flowers and other things has changed considerably since 1991. Okay. Do we have a motion? Ann? I um, move approval of the revised policy. Do we have a second? Second. Sarah. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor? Okay. Now we move to item number 22-2007. Request to enter executive session. To uh, just review a request for a tax abatement due to poverty or infirmity. Do we have a motion? David. I move that we enter executive session under Title I, Main Revised Statutes Annotated, Section 4056F, for the purpose of reviewing a request for a tax abatement due to poverty or infirmity. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Okay. Um, are we coming out of executive session? Do we need to? indicate to the public yeah we should indicate to the public uh, <coughs> that you know once we we go into executive session we're go, the only reason we're going to come out is to uh, adjourn and vote, yay well, or nay on this and vote yay or nay on this and also we should decide if we want to have the citizens discussion of items not on the agenda that's a, that's a great point are there any citizens that would discuss would like to discuss items that are not on the agenda prior to us moving into executive session yes, yeah? Yeah? <laughs> all set all right thank you so we don't have any so um can we take a vote on that one today no. okay all in favor moving into executive session all right sorry 
And I guess we should also note, though, before we go off the air, am I correct that we, after we come out of executive session, we are going to have a discussion of council goals? Yes. Yes. Um, That's a workshop. It's a workshop. Okay, in workshop. In workshop. Just so the public is aware that we will be meeting in workshop after this to discuss council goals for the upcoming year. Thank you, David, <laughs> for uh, bringing that up. Okay, duly noted. All right, we ready? Go to executive session. So the executive session is probably 10 or 15 minutes if you want to stay and then stay for the workshop. It's up to you guys. Can I ask a question? Yes, ma'am. 